Vou falar em inglês. É um pesadelo menor para mim. Um, everybody in this room knows that ventricular fibrillation is the main cause of sudden cardiac death, which is responsible for approximately 300,000 deaths in the United States alone. Most of these deaths are associated with identifiable causes such as ischemic heart disease, cardiomyopathy, prorhythmic syndromes, Idiopathic ventricular fibrillation, however, still accounts for up to 8% of victims. The ICD is the gold standard uh, in sudden cardiac death and ventricular fibrillation treatment. Um, it can deliver life-saving therapy at the time of, a, of an event, but as several inconvenient. It does not prevent the event from occurring. It can fail or deliver inappropriate therapy. Repeated ICD shocks for electrical storm may occur in 10 to 25% of patients. The ICD discharge are painful, deleterious, and syncope may occur before delivery of a shock. The ICD may not fully protect against ventricular fibrillation and electrical storm. So, adjunctive ventricular fibrillation ablation may be useful if possible, in reducing the recurrent episodes of ventricular fibrillation, reducing the number of ICD shocks, and probably um, remains to prove mortality of these patients. Uh, I want to share to you two cases. The first case report is a 25 years old police chief inspector, diary uh, sports practice, one episode of prolonged sync without pulse, no family story of sudden death, normal physical examination, EKG only with sinus bradycardia with normal QT. The echo and treadmill test were normal, and the, the alter monitoring uh, is here one sample. Um, um, very fast, uh, non sustained ventricular tachycardia. And before every uh, ventricular tachycardia, we have one extra systole. The extra systole, uh, um, here you have one isolated extra systole and here provoking uh, because it's short couple uh, with the, the anterior care QRS, uh, ventricular uh, tachycardia. Okay, we performed the um, flake night test that was completely normal, so Brugada was excluded and uh, we performed the AP study trying to induce something but we could not induce anything even with a um, very, um, uh, very intensive um, stimulation. But also we don't have any ectopic beats during the entire study. So what to do next? We perform uh, magnetic resonance that was normal, and uh, also the angiography, coronary angiography was normal. Um, what we should do in the epi study? Uh, probably nothing because we don't have one only extra cyst during the epi study. However, when the ventricular uh, ectopic beats are very infrequent, uh, we can try to wake up these extra systoles using pacing maneuvers or pharmacological maneuvers like isoprotonol or adenosine, pace mapping to try the perfect matching with the ectopic uh, um, target bit, and also uh, trying to localize the Purkinje network is, uh, um, some, uh, is important uh, as we, we see uh, after. Also, to try to do it with a three-dimensional mapping tool. Of course, in this case, we need at least one extra systole, because with that we could um, we we could see in the two, 12 lead EKG uh, with by the orientation of the axis where is the uh, the, um, the, the, the the axis of the extra systole, so um, to decide if uh, is a left posterior. Uh, Purkinje ectopic bit or anterior ectopic bit, uh, left ectopic bit, or um, if uh, come from the right Purkinje system or even from the ventricular outfog tract. Um, in our case, um, probably 
with this axis we have one extra system coming from the east Purkinje system from the right. Returning to the case, the ICD was proposed, but uh, in the while to implementation, because the patient need to, to, um, needs to decide uh, himself, cardiac arrest and uh, ventricular, ventricular fibrillation occurs. Electrical storm during the intensive care unit was treated with ventilation and sedation. The patient was discharged with an ICD, and six months later he had already won appropriate therapy. What should we do? To try a blade ectopic beats during the electrical storm, uh, it was a possibility. But after the admission, the patient was very unstable and uh, agitated. After sedation, the ectopic beats and, ectopic, uh, fibril and the ventricular fibrillation episodes completely stopped. So we lose the opportunity to ablate. Um, what we do uh, in ventricular um, um, fibrillation, idiopathic ventricular fibrillation, um, the procedural endpoint is the abolition of all clinical uh, ventricular ectopic beats. These ectopic beats are located by mapping um, the year list electrogram relative to the onset of the ectopic KYRS complex during the ventricular ectopy. But uh, sometimes when there is um, not uh, so many ectopies during sinus rhythm, the location of the Purkinje network was indicated by a sharp potential less than 10 milliseconds preceding the QRS in less, less than 15 milliseconds. You can see here uh, two good examples. The second case report is um, a 26 years old lady with normal structural art, story of syncope and cardiac arrest in ventricular fibrillation one month before, palpitation since five, uh, six years ago. She was discharged from another hospital without ICD and referred to us by her assistant cardiology. Uh, he, she, had, she had very frequent ventricular ectopic beats with right bundle branch block morphology and left axis deviation in 24 hours, alter monitoring. So we performed AP study. Uh, the end point was, of course, the abolition of all clinical VPs. Um, is not a short coupling um, um, ectopy, but come from the left posterior, left posterior. And we have here, we use the CARTO system, however, it was not really necessary at all, um, only to, to put more um, radio frequency ablation around the place of the, the ectopy, where the ectopy was ablated. Uh, this is not a... Um, 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 a fusion it is really the same, the same QRS complex, and we have here the is, uh, sorry, the Purkinje, the Purkinje potential, and a very, um, a very um, percocyte, uh, ventri uh, very percocyte ventricular signal. So, um, when to ablate the, um, or try to ablate ventricular fibrillation is, of course, uh, very difficult, but uh, uh, when there is electrical storm resistant with ventricular therapy or wh where there is extra bits in a stable patient. Success of this strategy, uh, we have a, a report of long, long uh, follow-up in 28 patients, six centers. It was a multi-center study, 38 patients, not bad. Most published series in ventricular fibrillation ablation have reported immediate success rates ranging 81 to 100%. But during short follow-up, 24, 32 months, uh, we have recourse uh, in 0 to uh, 11%. In the longest series, this one, we, uh, we have 18% of recurrences in a medium of uh, 84 months. So the authors of this paper um, uh, conclude that uh, ventricular um, catheter ablation of triggered, uh, triggered PVCs 
therefore does not currently appear to be a core of ventricular fibrillation or a substitute for an ICD, although uh, it uh, is a very uh, useful role to play in uh, controlling electrical uh, storm. But there is the possibility to ablate uh, ventricular fibrillation in other uh, kind of pathologies. And we have a very recent review of uh, some papers uh, that uh, at least have uh, four cases of ventricular fibrillation ablation. So the long QT syndrome is possible to ablate the ventricular fibrillation. Brugada syndrome, ischemic heart disease, no ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy, cardiac amyloidosis, or after cardiac surgery or acute myocardial infarction. We have here, okay, um, you can see the, the most, the most um, the, 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 in the beginning, Asseguer with idiopathic ventricular fibrillation, but also with Burgada syndrome long QT with seven patients. Um, the target was the PVCs and the, 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 the Purkin system in bad cases. We have here one case of um, uh, long QT with uh, a typical uh, ECTOP from the outflow left tract causing a ventricular fibrillation. But uh, very interesting is this paper from Ned Mini. Um, nine patients um, with ventricular fibrillation, uh, very uh, lots of shocks because of recurrence of ventricular fibrillation. And um, what was done, it was from the epicardium and from the endocardium, uh, localized places of uh, delayed um, uh, uh, despolarization. And um, Nedmany um, find that uh, the anterior part in the epicardium of the right ventricular outflow tract has sometimes a very low, um, very low potentials and very fragmented potentials in this part, the purple, the purple um, color. You have here not only the purple color of fragmented signals, but also here very low, uh, in the red, very low uh, potentials. And uh, we have here also sometimes of uh, possibilities of um, uh, ablation places, um, uh, always in the epicardial site of the outflow tract. Uh, interestingly uh, is that uh, the, the patients before the ablation has a very typical um, type 1 Brugada um, pattern and after the ablation they don't have. Or sometimes is a little bit delayed, delayed, the normalization is a little bit delayed on time. We have here also one uh, nice paper uh, from this guy, 19... Uh, 20, uh, 2009, in post-acute post myocardial infarction, some, some cases uh, very uh, hard to treat with ventricular fibrillation, is possible to have uh, East Purkinje signals and uh, ectopic beats from the posterior inferior region. Uh, of course, in this, uh, this, uh, this patient is a posterior acute myocardial infarction. Also, one very nice um, paper is from Maros in ischemic cardiomyopathy. Um, he target the border of scar, like we did in, uh, in uh, TV, in TV monomorphic TV, uh, but uh, trying to to find trying to find uh, some uh, potentials, some Purkinje pur potentials. We have one signal, uh, one example here from the same paper, uh, potential in sinus rhythm. Purkinje potential in sinus rhythm and after, uh, before the ectopy. And uh, conclusions. The main clinical use of catheter ablation at present in the treatment of ventricular fibrillation is to target and ablate the critical time ventricular ectopic beats that are responsible for triggering the ventricular fibrillation episodes. 
Most of cases, these triggering PVCs appear to originate from this Purkinje system. Catheter ablation of the culpit uh, P PVCs can be very effective at reducing the ventricular fibrillation episodes and may be life-saving life in cases of electrical storm. However, is not a cure from ventricular fibrillation. Um, in addition, to, um, to uh, three-dimensional electro-anatomic mapping system may be helpful in providing information on low voltage areas and scary regions, especially in patients with structural heart disease, which may be the sites of tigering PVCs. Difficulties with conventional mapping and ablation may arise in cases of recurrent episodes of ventricular fibrillation during the procedure. So, in these situations, identification of a substrate during sinus rhythm may be a very important strategy. This may include identification and ablation of potential Purkinje potentials that precede the culpit PVCs responsible for triggering of ventricular fibrillation episodes in cases of idiopathic ventricular fibrillation or mapping and ablated scar border zones in the patients with structural heart disease. Cambiando um pouco la linguage, há similitudes entre la ventricular fibrillation e de La Coruña, a cidade de La Coruña. Um, Los, los electrofisiólogos creen que la ablación de la fibrilación auricular es la última frontera de la ablación por catéter. Y no, no, no pasado, los romanos estaban convencidos que a Coruña era la última frontera en la faz de la tierra. Estaban equivocados. Muchas gracias por vuestra atención. <tose>